Be seated. In a few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about constant supply. Constant supply. What did I call it? So let me just read the text. The text from Zechariah chapter 4. <clears throat> the Bible says, verse 6 to 10, the Bible says, So he answered and said to him, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become plain. You shall become plain, and it shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The ends of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. Its ends shall also finish it. Oh, whatever you start, you will finish. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? Who has looked down on the days of small things? This thing is too little. to God, you have not done everything. I mean, this one that you gave to me is too small. This is not what I'm asking for. Why are you giving me this one? Who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord. We scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Amen. Amen. So today I want to zero in on the Lord of hosts. I'm coming back to constant supply. But I want to open your understanding. Thank you, sir. I want to, I want to, I want to give you understanding on hosts. Because the Bible says, not by might, not by, by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. If you look at your Bible, it's S. There's an S, plural. Amen. Says the Lord of hosts. So I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to zero in on the host and the Lord of hosts. Uh, you know, the, the word host in the Hebrews just means sabbath. It means armies. Amen. That means angelic armies in heaven. So these angelic armies in heaven, there are a lot of things that they do, but I want to give you three, three um, assignments that they carry in your life. Amen. So that when you live here, I don't want the rest of these three days remaining to be days that you just want to play around with. You have to take them serious. You have to know those who are working for you. And when the Bible says those who are with you are more than those who are in the world, you, the, the angels in heaven are innumerable company, the Bible calls them. That means you can't count them. Amen. So they are called hosts. The hosts are the ones that really go on assignment for you. They are the, 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 God, the uh, angel armies. Amen. So the first, ones, uh, the first one I want you to see is the military angels. The military angels. They are made up of angels like they are like, in, like military. You know, militaries, they live in camps encampment, right? These military angels, they are, they are always in group. They are always in group. They live in encampment. They will show up and to back you up. They will give you boldness to step up. Those, that's their job. They will show up to back you up. Anytime you want to uh, 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 get your hand on something, the uh, uh, military angels will rise up to help you because they know that along the way you may find obstacles. So the military angels comes to back you up, to give you boldness, to step up. Listen, let's open to the, uh, the Bible. I, I need to teach you this one. If this is all I do tonight, I will take it up um, uh, by the grace of God. But listen, Genesis 32 verses 1 to 2. This is very important so that when you're going in the year 2024, you have to understand that the military angels are with you. That's their job. Amen. Genesis 32 verses 1 so to, we're talking about Jacob here. Remember, Jacob worked with Laban, worked for uh, Rebecca, worked for um, Rachel, and worked for Leah, 
right? Worked for Rachel and worked for Leah. And he, after, after he had worked for Rachel, worked for Leah, worked for, worked for uh, Laban, and did all that he could do, but yet he wasn't having peace of mind. The sons of Laban, at this time, they said, ah, this guy wants to take everything that belongs to our father. When he heard them, the Bible says, he had to run for his life, and the Lord told him, go back to Bethel. Amen. Go back to Bethel. Go back. Hallelujah. So, verse 1, the Bible says, So Jacob, I say thank you for helping me. So Jacob went on, Genesis 32, 1 to 2. So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. He went on his way. The angels of God, they did what? Met him. How many angels? Angels. They met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. Amen. Amen. And he called the name of the, that place Mahanim. That means double camps. Hallelujah. So these military angels, they come and stay with you. They help you to fight your battle. There are some angels that command the structure. The angels are the command structure. Uh, the company of angels in the command center of God, they provide services and resources. They give you resources. They come and give you the uh, resources. I, I think one of them will be the angel Gabriel. They come and give you services and resources. Those um, um, those, not Angel Gabriel, but sorry, Angel Michael. Those kind of angels you find in Psalms 91, 11 to 12. Amen. What did I call the first angel? The second one. Command structure angels. So, uh, Psalm 91, verses 11 to 12. The Bible says, For he shall give his angels, what? Charge over you to keep you in all your ways, in their hands, providing services for you. In their hands, they shall do what? Bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. In their hands, they will carry you. Amen. Because that's their job. They do service. Remember my grandson, when, when uh, he fell, we always say it, and we still give thanks to God every day. In fact, on this Christmas, one of the kids, were, when we were talking, was still talking about it. And, his, and um, she said that, you know, um, that our own grandmother was saying that it must be a miracle. That they have a fireman in their family. And the fireman said, how did that boy survive? Because they've seen, you know, firefighters, they go to see all this issue. He said, it's not possible. For a little child to fall from the second floor and fall on pebbles. And there's nothing, no, no brain damage. She said, she's, I, I, I mean, she said the, that the fire, uh, her cousin that is the firefighter was, keeps asking her, are you sure the boy is still okay? Amen. Because he gives his angel charge. That's the reason why in your, in your accidents, your accident, you will have a ghastly accident. But the angels will just bring you out like this. Amen. The car may be total, it may be written off, but you are you are standing at Gidik, but you are standing sure, you are standing without a crush. It must be Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember in 20, 2014 when we went to Nigeria, Daddy told us about it. I mean, the car was. It, it, I believe that it was the angel that told those cars, uh, the trailers that were coming, stand still. So no trailer this way, no trailer that way, nobody on the right, nobody on the left. The car somersaulted, somersaulted all the way it was somersault and landed on the side of the road. Hello. It didn't land in the middle, but on the side of the road. So when the cars were coming, nobody was stopping anybody. You know Nigeria, who will be the firefighter and the policeman that will come there? Who will be the one that will come and do accident report and you will wait now <laughs> hallelujah but God by himself told these angels move the car to the side and by the time we know we were just coming out one by one one by one, one at a time amen it's, it gives his angels so those are the ones that provide services hallelujah the last one and this last one too, Angel Michael is among them, the warring angels. 
There are warriors that are ready for battle. As you leave this place, ah, in 2024, your warring angels, your warring angels, they will not leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to, they participate in combat. Listen, Daniel chapter 10. Verses 12 to 13, the Bible says, then he said to me, Daniel was conversing with angel Gabriel, right? And Daniel had been fasting 21 days. How many days have we been fasting? For some of us, you know why you didn't answer? Because some of you have not fasted at all. And some of you, it's only three days. Some of you, it's on and off. And some of you, you started from the first. Amen. For all of us, mercy will prevail. Amen. Amen. So Daniel was fasting these 21 days. 21 days of fasting. He was fasting. And he was praying. The Bible, in verse 1 of that chapter 10, he said, the vision that Daniel saw, he was sure of it. What God asked him to do, he was sure of it. But for 21 days fasting and prayer, he has not received anything. And then the Bible says, God said, ah, what is still keeping Daniel on his toe, on his knees? Let go and see Michael. By the time Michael got there, you know that angel, angel um, Gabriel is not a warring angel. So the Prince of Persia was fighting and warring with him. He couldn't overcome because that's not his assignment. And when Michael got there, Michael took over. Not my Michael, but in Jermichael. Or go for what comes Michael, but in Jermichael. But anyway, jokes apart, in Jermichael took over took over the battle, and when he started fighting the battle, that released Angel Gabriel to be able to go to Daniel. So when he got to Daniel, this is what he was saying. Then he said to me, this Daniel reporting, the angel said to me, do not fear Daniel, from, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard from the first day. Somebody say first day. From the first day that you started this throne room experience, your prayers have been answered. Yeah. Then the angel says, I have come because of your words, because you did not stop to pray. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Every demonic oppression, demonic power that have been withholding your breakthrough. I call for the assignment of the warring angels to come and put those them out of your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit that antagonize your progress in the name of Jesus, the warrior angel, my savior are released tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. They will fight for you. They will fight for your children. They will fight for your husband. They will fight for your wife. They will fight in your business. They will fight in your career. They will fight at your work. They will fight in your health. The warring angels, they will fight every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus. No demonic oppression or demonic power from today onwards. We have power over you in the name of Jesus. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We seal it up in Jesus' name. And he said, he came to help me, for I'd left, I've been left alone there with the king of pasture. pasture. So that is the host. Host are who now? Huh? Huh? They are angelic. Angelic I miss. Amen. So let me talk about the Lord of hosts. Remember? Not by power, not by, not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says who? The Lord. So let me talk to you about the Lord of hosts. In the Bible, the Lord of hosts occurs 261 times. The Lord of hosts in the Old Testament, right? Yahweh God is the Lord of heavenly armies. Or Jehovah God is the Lord of heavenly armies. He's self-existent. Is our redemptive God. Is the God of angel armies. 
It's the Yahweh Sabaoth. The one that fights your battle. is the commander in chief of the host of heaven. Hallelujah. He does not lose battle. He doesn't lose battle. Amen. So that this time around, when you, when you go in 2024, you have to say, Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts, fight my battle. The moment you call him, because it's not by your power, not by might. But by his spirit, he will release his spirit to release you in Jesus' name. So the first place that the Lord of us was mentioned is in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3. Uh, you know, you know, let me just read it because I didn't want to read it for a time, but let me read it. 1 Samuel, if you can write it, write it. If I write it, can help. But you know, I, I want to quickly go into it. The Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, this man went up from his city, talking about Elkanah, went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also is the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, the priest of the Lord, were there. Listen. I intentionally want to read this. The Lord of hosts may be walking, but you have to keep yourself in place. Where the Lord of hosts was operating. The Bible says Elkanah with Penina and Anna went to the temple to worship the Lord. And the Bible says the Lord of hosts was where? There. Right? But Ophni and Phineas were there too. Doing what they will do. Can I tell you in 2024? God may be doing things, you know, in the midst of the church. He may be doing things here. The Lord of us may appear. But you have to put yourself in place where you can see you. Amen. Live for him. Amen. Because he can be there operating. He can be here walking. He can be in this temple doing the miracles that he wants to do. But you have to place yourself strategically where he can see you. Hallelujah. Where he can operate in your life too. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very important. The Lord of hosts. He will release his angel armies. In the year 2024. But set yourself in, 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 in the position where he can bless you too. So in the next 10 minutes, I want to talk about constant supply. Because this is very important. You know, I told you my topic is constant supply. But I just want you to understand the Lord of hosts and the host of heaven. It's very important. So that when you find yourself alone, know that you are not by yourself. When things are failing around you, know that the Lord of hosts will not allow it to fail. No matter what report that you get, know that the Lord of hosts will not allow the report to be the final say in your life. But I'll come back to my topic, constant supply. On the fourth day of our revival of throne room experience, on the first day, Daddy was singing, Jesus is here. You have done it again. You remember when he said we should walk on? Jesus here. Yeah. In your special way. What was impossible? You made possible. So those two olive trees that the book of Zechariah said. I saw those two olive trees here. He was standing here. The two olive trees were here. If you go and read the book of, um, the, uh, the book of Zechariah, we'll, we'll read it later if we have time down the, down the week. But listen, those two trees, those two trees were the one, olive tree supplies oil, right? Those two trees were standing. So I didn't know when I came to the front. Normally when it calls people to the front, I stay back. Because I want to allow you to come to, come to the front. I shouldn't be the one blocking you, Right? But I was following that olive tree. I was following, I was, I was in awe. 
that we can be having service and God in the midst of our song, those of you that didn't sing that song, you better repair yourself again because you still have time. It looked mundane. It looked ordinary. It looked as if, why are we dancing to the front? For what reason? But the, olive, the two olive trees were here pouring oil. So you were dancing but receiving anointing. Am I communicating with somebody? It's very important. The mother of Jesus said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So from that night, when I saw the truth, then I went, and I just wrote that topic, constant supply. So let me tell you, for the year 2024, there's going to be constant supply. In the name of Jesus. Abundance is coming to you. <laughs> oh, you got to believe. Abundance is coming to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The angels, the, the, the Bible says that the, the, uh, um, the, the prophet, Zechariah, was asking the angels. He said, what about these two olive trees? I mean, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 3. He said, the two olive trees are by it. One at the right and the sun. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked to me, saying, what are these, my Lord? What are these one? What are these one? What are these one? The Bible says that the menorah was in the middle. There was a bow and constant supply was coming into that when when the menorah is on and light is shining the light is burning the oil is burning it never quenches there will be a light that will shine in your life that will never quench in the mighty name of jesus christ if you have been confused before god will bring clarity to you so there's going to be constant supply in the year 2022 24 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I love the scripture in the book of, of 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 17 to 18, when the kings were going and they were, they were going to fight a battle and none of them asked the Lord if, if they should go or not. So when they came to Elisha and asked Elisha, after Elisha really told the king off, then he said, for thus says the Lord, in verse 17, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, Yet the valley will be filled with water. So it's not by power or, nor might, but by the Spirit. Say so that your cattle, your, your, that you, your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. The miracle you are looking for is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. That thing that is giving you depression and, and you know suicidal thoughts and all of those craziness that the enemy wants to put in you is a simple matter in the hand of the Lord. Your healing is a simple matter in the hand of the Lord. He said the, the Bible says it will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. You will overcome your enemy in 2024. In the name of Jesus. So what do I have to tell you in the next three minutes? Have faith what? in God. Number one, for you to get that constant supply, have faith in You cannot look at your present situation. You have to have faith in who? You cannot calculate how things are going to work. Amen. You've been doing this for a long time. This is how God will do it and this is who I want him to use. This is how I want him to use. Have faith in You cannot determine the way which it will take. But have faith in, you will not see the rain, but your dishes will be filled with water. Yes. Have faith in, number two, trust God. Trust God. Number one is what? Number two is what? Trust God. God is not a man that he will lie. Nor the son of man that he will repent. As he said it, will he not do it? God will shake heaven and earth to make sure that what he has spoken to you, what he has told you, he will bring them to pass. The Bible says if heaven and earth pass away, a jot of the word of God will never go unfulfilled. Whatever God has placed in your heart, you may not hear a door says the Lord, but he has placed it in your heart. It's burning in your heart like fire. That's him making it to burn in your heart like fire. Don't 
put it in the cooler anymore. Carry it and begin to do it because he's not going to take your power or your might. He's going to take the spirit of the Lord to establish what he wants to do. Hallelujah. If you can trust your car when you were dressing up and you say, this car will take me to church. God can do better than your car. You got to trust God. If you can trust that seat, that chair you are sitting. And when I told you sit down, you didn't look at it and say, is this, will this hold me? Because you trust is going to hold you. Trust God. Trust God. In 2024, trust God. If you can trust the government that they will give you tax money. Whether they have money, they don't have money, at least they will take care of you. Is God not bigger than the government? Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Amen. The last one. Have passion for the things of God. Have passion. Have passion. You have to have a good start this year. Be intentional and consistent. Amen. I love the testimony of Yenka Kukoi when she said one of her prayer prayer partner and she was telling that person that I can't, I, you know, I can't wake up. Sometimes some of us, we can set alarm to it. We just lose it when that time comes. Amen. And the person, I just, I just, I was listening to her and I was like, That's, this person is right. The person said, if you can just start when you want to pray, you start. It may be very difficult. But before you know it, the Holy Spirit becomes your alarm. Yes. That at that time when you will wake up to pray, you can't go back to sleep again. I don't care if you have just gone to sleep one hour ago. When it comes to that time that you need to pray, you will not be able to go back to sleep until you get up to pray. And by the time you get up to pray, you get refreshed in the spirit. God sometimes is calling us to the altar. Get some fire. Initially, when you start, it may not be palatable, but keep at it. Be consistent, intentional in the year 2024. If the hours you spend on social media is more than the hours you spend combining prayer and reading the word, you've not done well. You have to repent on that one. You have to repent. You have to have passion for the things of God. Hallelujah. You have to form an habit of, of how you do things for God and, and how you pray. And, and see, do you know that when you were browsing that social media, you started with, with, uh, with, uh, with, um, with um, passion, right? Uh, it, it, then it got to a point you're saying, I want to know what is going on. Some of us, we cannot sit down in one second. I was at lunch with some people. All of us had our phone in our hand. You go to lunch to discuss, right? And have this body, body. But everybody was on the phone. Then I had to stop everybody. I said, stop, 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 stop. Why are we here? Because we can look at our phone in the house. Right? We came to fellowship together. Some of you can't do without it. You know why? Because practice make perfect. You perfected yourself into it. Perfect yourself into prayer. Perfect yourself into the word of God. Hallelujah. Come, come to church next year intentionally. Uh, you know, just come to church. In 2024, make sure that your online church is less than your in-person. Amen. And when you are coming, do you know what brings me to church? It's not because I'm a pastor's wife or I'm a pastor or co-pastor. No. It's because I, I, I just feel that maybe somebody will need a hug. Right? Maybe somebody will need a touch. Hallelujah. Why don't you do that? Maybe you, you, you will be an encouragement to somebody in the year 2020. If you are at home, you can't do that. There are some people that will not talk to me, but they will talk to you. They need your presence in the church. Am I communicating with us? Hallelujah. Time is fast spent. Let us rise. Did you receive anything tonight? 
I want you to go and pray to the Lord of hosts. Only one prayer. I will pray in your water. Then Pastor Gil will take it from there. I want you to pray like you never prayed before. And you say, Lord of hosts. Ah, that's not the way you're supposed to say it. Say, fight for me. I don't want to miss my blessing. For the remainder of this year and the year 2024. Lord of hosts, fight for me. I don't know what is stopping me. But Lord of hosts, fight for me. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, somebody. I told you who the Lord of hosts is. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to lift up your water. I don't want to extend more time because I want you to come back tomorrow. Lift up your water. I want you to call the Lord of hosts three times into your water and your oil. Call the Lord of hosts three times. And then you begin to ask, ask of what you want the water to do for you. Ask the Lord. 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 If you don't have water, look for your vein, where your vein or your arteries. Just touch something in your body. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Are you praying into your water and your oil? Lord of hosts, this sickness is remaining. It doesn't want to go. Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts. When I use this water and I drink it, every mark of the enemy in my life, let it be erased. Lord of hosts, turn my water to be the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. I pray that the Lord of hosts will raise his hand over your water. In the name of Jesus, the God of angel armies, by the blood of Jesus, he will raise his hand over your water and sanctify your water. In the mighty name of Jesus, every inner battle you are fighting, every battle in the flesh you are fighting, every battle in the demonic realm that you are fighting, in the name of Jesus, the power of God will enter the water and erase and destroy them in your life. In the name of Jesus, every generational battle will be erased by this water. In the mighty name of 